Welcome to the Wraith Tavern. History on tap. Enjoy the video. The late 17th century marked a time of great change in the Caribbean. European powers vied for control of lucrative trade routes. This led to an increase in privateering. Privateers were essentially legal pirates. One such haven was New Providence, home to Nassau. It was close to busy shipping lanes. The island was difficult to attack. It offered numerous inlets and hidden coves. In 1696, pirate Henry Avery arrived in Nassau. Avery had pulled off one of the most daring heists in history. This act solidified Nassau's reputation as a safe haven for pirates. It became a magnet for pirates, buccaneers and privateers alike. The turn of the 18th century saw a surge in piracy. The War of the Spanish Succession had just begun. This conflict drew major European powers into a bitter struggle. The war disrupted traditional trade routes and created a surplus of unemployed sailors. Many of these sailors turned to piracy to survive. Nassau, with its established pirate infrastructure, became a prime destination. The island saw an influx of infamous pirate captains, including Benjamin Hornigold, Henry Jennings, and Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard. These men commanded powerful ships and loyal crews. The pirates of Nassau began to operate with increasing boldness. They formed alliances known as the Flying Gang. They attacked merchant ships of all nationalities. They even raided Spanish settlements along the coast of Florida. The pirates grew wealthy from their plunder. They lived lives of freedom and excess in Nassau. The island transformed into a bustling pirate stronghold. Taverns overflowed with looted goods. Blacksmiths repaired weapons and ships. The streets were alive with the sounds of revelry and danger. The Republic of Pirates was in its prime. The Republic of Pirates was not a formal government in the traditional sense. It had no standing army, no written constitution, and no system of taxation. However, it did have leaders who commanded respect through their charisma, cunning, and ruthlessness. Benjamin Hornigold was a skilled sailor and a shrewd strategist. He believed in a certain code of honor among pirates. He often released captured ships and crews unharmed if they surrendered without resistance. Henry Jennings, on the other hand, was known for his brutality. He led daring raids on Spanish treasure fleets. He amassed a considerable fortune. And then there was Blackbeard, perhaps the most notorious pirate of them all. He cultivated a fearsome image. He was said to have lit slow-burning matches under his hat to intimidate his enemies. Blackbeard's reign of terror along the Carolina coast cemented the legend of the Republic of Pirates. These men, along with others like Charles Vane, Samuel Bellamy, and Steed Bonnet, formed a loose ruling council in Nassau. They settled disputes, planned raids, and maintained order within the pirate community. Their rule, however, was based on a delicate balance of power and self-interest. The pirates of Nassau, despite their reputation for lawlessness, adhered to a strict code of conduct. This code, often referred to as the Pirate Articles, governed everything from the distribution of plunder to the resolution of disputes. The Articles were surprisingly democratic for their time. Each crew member had a vote in matters concerning the ship and its mission. Captains were elected by the crew and could be deposed if they proved to be incompetent or tyrannical. This system ensured that power was shared, albeit unequally, among the pirates. The Articles also outlined a system for distributing treasure. Each crew member received a share of the loot, with higher shares going to those who had been wounded in battle or who held positions of greater responsibility. This system helped to maintain loyalty and prevent mutiny. Perhaps the most important aspect of the Pirate Code was its emphasis on personal freedom. Pirates were free from the constraints of society, free to choose their own destinies and free to live by their own rules. This spirit of freedom was at the heart of the Republic of Pirates, the shadow of the British Empire. The success of the Republic of Pirates did not go unnoticed. European powers, particularly the British, viewed the pirate haven at Nassau with increasing concern. The pirates' raids disrupted trade, challenged British authority, and threatened the delicate balance of power in the Caribbean. In 1713, the War of the Spanish Succession ended. Thousands of sailors and privateers found themselves unemployed. Many of them flocked to Nassau, swelling the ranks of the pirates. This influx of manpower, however, also brought instability. The British Crown, under pressure from its colonies and its rivals, decided to take action. 
the governor of Bermuda, Woods Rogers, was appointed as the new governor of the Bahamas. He was tasked with eradicating piracy in the region and restoring British control. Rogers was a formidable opponent. He was a former privateer himself. He understood the ways of the sea and the motivations of the pirates. He arrived in Nassau in 1718 with a royal pardon in hand, offering amnesty to any pirate who renounced their criminal ways. The pardon of 1718, the arrival of Woods Rogers, and the offer of a royal pardon marked a turning point in pirate history. The pardon offered a way out for those tired of the pirate life. Many pirates, including Benjamin Hornigold, accepted the pardon. Hornigold became a pirate hunter for the British. Others, however, refused to surrender. Among them were Charles Vane and Edward Blackbeard Teach. Blackbeard terrorized the coast until he was killed in battle. The pardon shattered old alliances and pitted former friends against each other. The Republic of Pirates began to crumble, the end of an era. Despite the defection of some pirates and the death of Blackbeard, the struggle for control of Nassau continued. Charles Vane, now a fugitive, returned to the island with a vengeance, determined to drive out the British. Vane's forces, however, were no match for the growing might of the Royal Navy. He was captured and hanged in 1721, his death marking the end of an era. With Vane's demise, the Republic of Pirates effectively ceased to exist. Nassau, once a bustling pirate stronghold, was transformed into a British colony. Fortifications were built, a government was established and law and order were imposed. The golden age of piracy in the Caribbean had come to an end. The demise of the Republic of Pirates was not simply a victory for the British Empire. It marked a broader shift in the balance of power on the high seas. The rise of national navies, the decline of privateering and the increasing regulation of trade all contributed to the decline of piracy in the 18th century. Legacy of Defiance. The Republic of Pirates, though short-lived, left an indelible mark on history. It represented a challenge to the established order, a brief moment in time when outlaws and rebels held sway. The pirates of Nassau, with their democratic ideals, their thirst for freedom and their disregard for social norms, captured the imagination of generations to come. The legacy of the Republic of Pirates is complex and multifaceted. On the one hand, the pirates were ruthless criminals who preyed on the innocent and amassed fortunes through violence and theft. On the other hand, they were symbols of rebellion against tyranny, of individual liberty and of the pursuit of adventure. The stories of Blackbeard, Charles Vane and the other pirates of Nassau continue to fascinate us today. They remind us of a time when the seas were wild and untamed, when fortune favoured the bold, and when the line between hero and villain was often blurred. Pirates in popular culture. The image of the pirate with his eye-patch parrot and treasure is an enduring part of popular culture. From Errol Flynn's adventures to Disney rides, pirates capture our imaginations. The Republic of Pirates has inspired books, films and TV shows. The Star series Black Sails offered a gritty portrayal of pirate life. Video games like Assassin's Creed IV, Black Flag, let players be pirate captains. Pirates represent adventure, freedom, and a challenge to authority. A story of freedom and chaos. The Republic of Pirates was a fleeting moment in history, a brief but brilliant explosion of freedom and chaos. It was a time when outlaws and rebels ruled the waves, when the pursuit of wealth and adventure trumped all other considerations. The pirates of Nassau, with their democratic ideals, their strict code of conduct, and their unwavering thirst for freedom, created a unique and ultimately unsustainable society. Their reign was short-lived, but their legacy continues to fascinate and inspire us today. The story of the Republic of Pirates is a reminder that the pursuit of freedom often comes at a price. It is a tale of adventure, of greed, of betrayal, and ultimately of the triumph of order over chaos. It is a story that continues to capture our imaginations, reminding us of the power of the human spirit to challenge convention and to seek a different path. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel.